The church in India was blessed to receive a faith in Christ from the very beginning of Christianity. Indian church received a faith directly from the Apostle St. Thomas who traveled to the land of Kerala in 5480. The Christian community founded by St. Thomas gradually sprouted up and flourished till the 16th century. This church in Kerala was known as Nasrani, which means followers of the Nazarene. But unfortunately, the Nasrani community was split up into two groups. The group which stood with the Catholic Communion was known as Paregur, and the group that left the Catholic Communion came to be known as Putangur. In course of time, the Putangur community became a place of conflicts and scandals, losing all its spiritual identity. As Moses was sent to the Egyptians, a revolutionary was born in these events, bringing forth a series of events which culminated in the birth of the Malangara Catholic Church. Archbishop Marivanius, a luminous figure of the 20th century, was a tireless apostle for unity, a man endowed with rare and sterling qualities both of mind and heart. Above all, he was a lover of truth. Panikarvital was a traditional Orthodox Christian family in Mavalikara Alapura district, Kerala. A male child was born in this family on September 21st, 1882 to Thomas Panikar and Annamma Panikar through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary whose feast falls on September 21. He was baptized by his uncle Skaria Panikar Katanar on October 4th, 1882 and was named Givarkis. It was from Skaria Panikar Katanar that he imbibed Christian zeal and fervor. His mother, Annama Panikar, infused in him the devotion of Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, which influenced him very much throughout his life. The Panikar family was a family of priestly succession. Every day, when the family gathered together for prayer, Kivargis, being the eldest son, had to read the Holy Bible, as was the practice among the Orthodox family in Kerala. Young Kivargis had made use of this practice to memorize the word of God. This is evident in the later writings and homilies of Marivanius. During his childhood, he has shown an extraordinary inclination for a fervent spiritual life. On his way to and from the school, he used to pay a visit to the Pudyakau church. Kivargis had his early education in Protestant and government schools where he was described as an extraordinarily intelligent, observant and considerate boy. During this time, there happened a significant ordinary event that marked a turning point in the life of young Kivargis. On a fine evening, Pulikotil Madhivanyasios arrived at Pudyakau Church, the native place of Kivargis, the metropolitan happened to learn about the courageous nature of young Givargis, which enabled him to take any risk for the cause of the church. The Metropolitan was happy to take him to Kota for high school education. Thus, from 1897, he started his high school education in MD Seminary High School, Kota. From then onwards, his inclination to priestly life gained strength. In 1899, he completed his matriculation education, before which he had received minor orders on September 20, 1898. Seeing his spiritual zeal and fervor for the church, Pulikutil Martivinasius decided to ordain him a deacon. He was ordained a deacon on January 9, 1900. Ivergi Samashan joined CMS College, Korte and completed intermediate education. He continued his studies in Madras Christian College and took bachelor's degree in economics and Indian history. In 1907, he took MA degree with distinction from the same college. On his return from Madras, he was appointed principal of his alma mater, MD Seminary High School. During this time, he took initiative in various schemes for the renewal of the Malankara Church. He organized basic Christian communities, Bible conventions, 
and instilled in the minds of the people of God fervor for the sacramental life. Because of this, he was popularly entitled Kudasha Shimash. On September 15, 1908, Kivargi Shimashan was ordained priest by Vatasheril Madhivanasius. He was a priest with a vision and mission. Father P.T. Givargis was popularly known as M.A. Achan as he was the first priest to take M.A. degree from the Malangra Church. Because of his contribution to the field of education, he proved himself an exceptionally capable educationalist. By this time, he became a prominent leader in the socio-cultural and religious realms. The religious context in the Malankara Church at this time was very pathetic. The lust for power was creeping into the church from every corner. Father Givergis was deeply grieved at this pathetic situation. To establish autonomy and peace in the Malankara Church once again, Father Givergis thought of erecting a Catholic gate in Malankara. On September 5, 1912, the Malangra Catholic Aid was established. In 1912, Vatasheril Madhivan received an invitation to attend a conference at Calcutta. The conference was for the Christian students of India. Madhivan selected Father Givar Gies to accompany him to Calcutta to attend the conference. At the conference, everyone was highly impressed by the scholarly eloquence of M. A. Dr. Havels, the principal of Sarampur College, requested the Metropolitan the service of Father P. T. Givergis as the professor of the college. Though it was painful for him to leave his church, the Spirit of the Lord led him to take up the professorship in Sarampur College. Resigning from the MD Seminary High School, he joined Sarampur College. He made use of this opportunity to empower the Malangra Church, and he took initiative to organize and educate committed young women and men for the renewal of the church. At Sarampur, he spent days and nights in contemplation. It was a time of preparation to fill his ardent desire to raise himself to the stature of a saint in the religious life of a monastery. He came to the realization that possessing God is more sublime than serving Him. Slowly, the residents of Father Givargis and his followers at Sarampur turned to be an ashram and they began to live a sort of religious life according to the monastic rules of St. Basil, adapting them to Indian culture. As he accepted this as his way of life, he resigned from the Sarampur College. While he was in Calcutta, he was looking for a proper place to realize his long-cherished dream of founding an ashram. He desired to establish the ashram in a solitary serene atmosphere away from the noisy world. With the help of his friends, he managed to buy 100 acres of land at Mundanmala, Rani Pirunad. They built a small thatched hut made out of the branches of trees and bamboo. This turned to be the first ashram in Malankara, which was founded on August 15, 1990. Prayerfully, he searched for a name for the ashram, and opening the Bible dictionary, the word Bethany struck him. He meditated upon it and came to the conclusion that it is an apt name for a religious order which upholds both contemplation and action. Eventually, the Bethany Ashram became a place of pilgrimage and spiritual experience. Father Givergis envisioned the ashram as a shelter, also for the poor and the marginalized. Along with the ashram, he started a house for the orphans. Abu Givergis was consecrated bishop on May 1, 1925 at Niranam near Thiruvilla. He became the bishop of Bethany in the Orthodox Church with the title Givergis Mar Ivanius.
The Episcopal Synod of Malagra Church held at Parimala near Thiruvalla entrusted Marivanios to open negotiations with Rome for the communion with the Catholic Church in order to establish peace in Malagra. In the meantime, the civil court's decision on the litigation for a large sum of money, Vatipanam, was declared in favor of the Malangra Orthodox Church. This event let the Malangra Orthodox Church accept Marivanios and Matheophilos, the suffragan bishop of Beth, step out from the endeavor of communion with Rome. But Marivanios continued the efforts of communion on his accord. Finally, the dream of communion with the Catholic Church became true. On September 20, 1930, Marivanius made the Catholic profession before Bishop Aloysius Maria Benzinger OCD, the Bishop of Cullum, delegated by Pope Pius IX, along with Mar Theophilus, Father John OIC, Deacon Alexander OIC, and Mr. Chaco Kilile. Thus, the Sero Malankara Church entered into Catholic communion. Almost all the members of the Bethany congregation followed Marivanius into the Catholic fold. In 1932, Marivanius made a historic pilgrimage to Pope and he met Pope Pius IX who received him by uttering the famous words, Welcome, a big welcome. Marivanius received the sacred pallium from the Pope. He also participated in the 32nd Eucharistic Congress held in Dublin, Ireland. There he met Mr. G. K. Chesterton a well-known English writer who called Marivanius the new man of the East. On his return from Rome, Marivanius made strenuous efforts towards the building up of the Syro Malangara Catholic Church and equipping the church towards evangelization. Pope Pius IX established the Syro Malangara Catholic hierarchy for the reunited community on June 11, 1932 through the Apostolic Constitution Presto Pastorum Principi. The chief motive of Marivanius in his efforts for communion with the Catholic Church was to form a single fold of Christ. His motto was that all may be one. John 17 21. He took great efforts to establish Christian unity among the Malagra communities. He sent missionaries to different parts of Francor to preach the good news of the Catholic communion. Besides the reunited bishops and priests of the Malangra denominations, he welcomed missionaries from the Syro Malabar Church. Father Joseph Kurinalil, the founder of the Congregation of the Daughters of Mary, 1938, was a prominent missionary appointed by Marivanius to work in the southern parts of Travancore. The Smarivanius coordinated the apostolate of reunion and that of evangelization simultaneously. He was very keen and considerate to inquire about the missionary endeavors in the different parts of the Archdiocese. Under his leadership, about 75 priests were reunited from different denominations of Malangra Church and about 150 parishes, including mission stations, were founded in Kerala. His relationship with the civil authorities was also highly commendable. He aimed at the all-round upliftment of the society through education. In the view of this, he established about 50 schools and an A-grade college named after him, Marivanius College. Due to his heavy schedule of his life, the Archbishop became sick in 1952. He realized that his earthly days are numbered. He had already started the construction of St. Mary's Cathedral, Patan Pravandrum, by then. He used to visit the place where his tomb was to be erected and would utter, This is my last earthly abode. He had found a suitable successor for the Malangra Church in Father Benedict OIC, the then principal of Marivanius College. Father Benedict was ordained bishop on January 29. 1953 as Benedict Mark Gregorios. His grace was nearing his last hours. On July 15, Tuesday, 1953, around midnight, the Archbishop 
offered a soul to the Heavenly Father. Early in the morning of July 16, all the bells of the churches in the city tolled the sad news. All that day and all throughout the following night, crowds of people belonging to every religion and community came there to pay their homage to His Grace who was loved by one and all irrespective of their caste, creed and religion. On July 17, the Holy Eucharistic celebration was conducted in the presence of a good many bishops, priests, nuns and thousands of faithful. The funeral procession started at 9 a.m. from the pro-cathedral at Palaya to the cathedral at Pertam, where his body was to be interred. The Maharaja of Travancore wrote to Benedict Mar Gregorius, It is not only a loss, it is not only a loss to the archdiocese, but it is also a loss and a personal loss to the members of my family and to myself. During the many years past, I have come to know him intimately. He has been a close friend of ours. So I request you to accept a condolence on this occasion of deep sorrow. The body was interred into the tomb in the crypt beneath the sanctuary, according to the Antiochian rite in the seated posture. Finally, the tomb was closed with a white marble with the epitome that all may be one. Here rest the mortal remains of the Archbishop Givergis Marivanius, the prophet of ecclesial communion. The inscription on the tomb reads as follows. He looked for a city that has a foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Hebrew 11.10 The life of Marivanius inspired thousands and thousands of people. He was the Moses of the Malangra Catholic Church. His life was a testimony of divine choice guided by the providence of God. He was a mystic in God experience and was convinced that the realization of God is nobler than the service of God. This conviction made him a yogi mystic. The growth of the Syro Malangra Catholic Church is in itself a sign and miracle that the Lord gives to his people through the saintly life of Marivanius.